In this lesson, we'll add in eye controls. Let's say we import in a square curve. That'll save us some time. With the object selected, let's go ahead and just translate it forward. We'll grab our rotate tool. We're going to go ahead and use angle snap to rotate it 90 degrees so it projects towards the face. All right now, let's go ahead and quick align this over to the left eye's nub. Let's go to wireframe mode. You'll see that the pivot is slightly off. It's not a big deal, but just for cleanliness, what we can do is go ahead and center the pivot on this object. We'll head over to our hierarchy panel and underneath effect pivot only. We'll now go ahead and choose center to object. All right, from here, let's go ahead and turn off effect pivot only. And we'll quick align back to the left eye's nub. From here, let's go ahead and grab our scale tool. We'll head over to our modify panel. We'll grab all of our points and let's go ahead and scale down this size. That's better. Feel free to also adjust your thickness if you'd like. Okay, next, we'll go ahead and clone this object. Control V. Go ahead and choose OK and let's now align this over to the right eye's nub. Now grabbing both objects, we're going to go ahead and translate both out. We don't want them too close to the eyes, otherwise they will flip. We'll basically be working with look at constraints so that the eyes always are pointed towards these controls. So again, if we have them too close, that's going to be a problem. So just bring them out far enough. Okay, I think that's going to be just fine. Let's go ahead and rename these objects and we'll recolor them as well. So on the left side, that's going to be NML I Sir one We'll go ahead and rename the right side to NMRI. Beautiful. We can go ahead and now recolor them. On the right side, we could always work with a color of green. And then, on the left side, we could use a shade of blue. Okay, very nice. So now it's clear what side is what. All right. Next, let's go ahead and create our parent control. We have controls to drive the eye separately, but we need a parent control to drive them collectively. So we'll grab just one of these controls, we'll hold down shift, and we'll just drag away to create a copy. Let's rename this. It's going to be Enum Eyes Sir One. We could also recolor it. We use that same shade of yellow we've been using. Great. And then to center this object, we can work with a position constraint. So with it still selected, we'll go to Animation, Constraints, and find the position constraint. Now we can click on any one of these controls and see it has been aligned in our motion panel underneath position. We'll go ahead and scroll down and we'll choose Add Position Target and click on the next control. Once it's been centered, we can alt right click and use Transform to Zero to remove that constraint to clean this object up. Let's grab our scale tool and go to our modify panel. From here we'll go to our vertex of object level and grab our points. Just kind of scale this to be a little bit larger so it's clear that this is the main control. All right. So now, exiting our vertex of object level, what I'd like to do is actually use that color of yellow we've been using. It looks like used green instead. Just spotted that. That's much better. All right. Very important, we need to use the right color. <laughs> now, but let's go to make sure that these objects are going to be linked, then we'll go to freeze their transforms. And what I'd like to do is do this in the wrong order first. So with all of these selected, I'm gonna go ahead and alt right click and use freeze transform. Now watch what happens if we take our two subcontrollers and link to our main control. Now, if we alt right click and use transform to zero, you can see how they shift out of place. That's because we have now changed their parent space. So let's go ahead and undo that back. And here's the order. We need to link first and then we'd freeze our transforms. So if we go ahead and do that, you'll see that when we reapply transform to zero, the objects will not shift out of place. All right, so again, remember to link first 
and then you're ready to freeze. So let's go ahead and grab our main control object here for the eyes and we'll have it linked to our global control. Why not to the head control? Well, we need a way for the eyes to target. Now in the next level, we'll learn how to create a dynamic parent system to turn that functionality on and off. So if we wanted the eyes to follow the head, we most certainly can have that by simply turning on our space switching feature. And then if we no longer need to work with it, we can simply turn it off. So that's going to be really neat. All right, so once we've managed to link to our global control, we can then go ahead and alt right click and use freeze transform to clean up its transformations. We're now ready to finish up by setting up our look at constraint. So let's go ahead and grab the left eye and grab our move tool. We'll make sure it's set to local mode. And what you'll see is that it's the X axis that we need this bone to point in to make sure it looks at its control. That's exactly why we made sure to quick align these controls to these bone objects. So we have a very clean constraint. All right, so with the eye bone selected, we'll head over to animation and choose constraints and we'll grab our look at constraint. And now we can go ahead and tie that to our control. So take a look. You'll see that the object is facing in the right direction, but the orientation has shifted slightly. But we'll go ahead and correct that. Let's go ahead and press F3 to take a look. All right, so you can see that the eyeball has slifted slightly, but we'll go ahead and fix that. Scrolling down in our motion panel, let's make sure we're under our rotation list so we can get to our look at constraint properties. It's an orientation type constraint. But what's neat about it is it allows it, us to control the orientation of an object by the position of another. So you can see as we start to move the position of our control, we're driving the orientation of that eye. Going back to the eye bone, we'll go ahead and start to adjust its properties. So we know that before Y was pointed up and X was still pointed forward. So if we were to take a look at our settings, you'll see that the look at axis is correct. It's X. But we will need to change our source axis, which right now is the Z axis. Let's also make sure our up node control type is set to look at since we need this to behave in this type of way where it's not necessarily an alignment we need to do, but we need to make sure our look at constraint will follow this control correctly. And you can see that when we choose look at, we have this type of slant. So we have a few things that we need to now work on. But let's go ahead and correct this. We'll create a helper. Let's just make a point helper. We'll add it to our scene. And from here, we'll go ahead and use Shift A to quick align this to our eye bone. Now we need to go ahead and just translate this up because remember our Y axis was pointing up. So once we assign the Y axis as our up axis, we then need to choose the object it should point at. So we'll just go ahead and just translate this up. All right, great. Feel free to go ahead and clone this object and move that over to the right eye. So we can go ahead and use this as an up node object as well. So what I'd like to do, is just go ahead and just translate this up. If you'd like to have this aligned to the other control, you could always work with your snapping tool. Just right click and set this to pivot and I'll turn off grid point snapping. We'll press the S key and then we'll just grab one axis here and then choose the object we'd like to align to. So we have that choice as well. And then we could always disable pivot snapping and enable grid point snapping after we're finished. I'll also press the S key to disable the snapping feature. All right, great. So these two objects are now aligned. We could always go in and rename them. That's going to be up node underscore L underscore I for the left eyes up node control. I'll go ahead and copy that. Head over to the opposite side. Rename that to up node RI. Beautiful. Both of these should follow our head bone since that's exactly what our eyes follow. Great. So let's say we go ahead and correct this left eye now. With the eye bone selected, we can go back to our motion panel and we'll go ahead and change our source axis to the Y axis. And then for our up node object, let's uncheck world. We'll click on none. And now we'll go ahead and click on our up node control. Take a look. 
Let's go ahead and press F3. You'll see that the eye is just fine now. Great. What I'd also like to do is turn off the view line. But before I do, let's go ahead and turn off view line length absolute. And what you'll see is that now we have this line that connects right to our control. So if you would like to use that, you most certainly can. But once you hide your eye bone, this line is going to be hidden anyway. So if you want to go ahead and just hide it, you could always go ahead and grab your eye bone, head over to view line length, go ahead and just zero out that parameter, and no longer do we see that view line. So that's the process for setting up the opposite eye. Again, with it selected, we'll head to Animation, Constraints, and we'll grab a Look at Constraint. And then we'll go ahead and click on the control to look at. Our orientation is off, but we know how to fix that. Let's go ahead and first turn off the view line. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down. We'll go ahead and choose our upnode object. Great. We need to make sure that we are pointing in the y-axis, so we'll change our source axis to the y. Excellent. We'll also make sure our upnode control is set to look at. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and press F3 just to take a look. Very nice. So what we now can do is go ahead and grab our control object and start to move that around. We're driving both eyes. If we need to create an offset, it's very easy to do. Could also add some rotation to this control. You can start to kind of twist it around to create a googly eye type of effect. Very cool. All right, well, that's going to finish up our work for the eyes. If you would like, you can always go ahead and take your upnode controls, head over to Manage Layers, and we can create a layer for these objects. So with them still selected, let's go ahead and create a layer named Hidden. And any objects that we would like to hide from the animator, we can have them stored here. I'll make sure that the default layer is now active, and I'll go ahead and hide this layer.